From the heartland of America to every nation on Earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. If ever there were a time that I am happy to come into your home, it's right now. There's so much to share with you, and we're so thankful to God that he's opened this great opportunity to help you to understand some of the important things that are really going on out there. This first one really impresses me, and I think we should all be concerned about it. No-go zones looming for America, our blessed country, places we can't even go anymore. And then Iran sending nuke deal money to terror groups. Now, you know, we have sent them billions of dollars from the United States, and they're taking some of that money and giving it to terrorist groups. Can you believe that one? And then, my oh my, evangelicals feel threatened by anti-terror policies. We're going to be discussing so much with our guest today, but before we introduce our guest, once again, I just want to say that Jack, uh, today when I was leaving, he said, tell the people I can hardly wait to come back. By the help of the Lord and the presence of the Lord in his life and the healing power of the Lord, he's getting stronger every single day. And he's saying, I will want to come back within a few weeks from now. So keep him on your prayer list, as I always say. And uh, we know he's coming back very, very soon. In fact, our guest today, Dr. Carl Baugh, is the founder and director of Creation Evidence Museum of Texas, and it's in Glen Rose. My, oh, my, I could say so much about him. He lectures internationally on evidence for scientific creation on television radio, schools, churches, around the world, different organizations, and he stands firmly against the theology of evolution and for the biblical account of creation. But before we get into some of the things that he's done, I just want to say Jack had lunch with him today. And wasn't he good, Carl? Oh, absolutely. What a beautiful privilege. I'm sure many of you on the uh, this international program know that the Van Impies are very dear, longtime personal friends, like brother and sister to me. And at a restaurant, I had the sweet joy of having lunch with him today, and he said, please, you and Rexel to tell him, early in October, the first Sunday of October, I will be back in my place on the program. And his spirit and his mind were radiant and attuned. His body has a little recuperating yet to do, but it's coming along beautifully. And he watches every program, oversees every action and every motion. In fact, recently, I was in Fiji, in the South Pacific. And uh, Dr. Rexella, literally people came up to me in Fiji, which is the opposite spot of the globe from Jerusalem, the uttermost part of the earth. And you've been seen in Fiji for decades. People know, of course, that I'm very close to and associated with the Van Empies. And people came up to me and said, how is Dr. Van Empey? Oh. How soon is he coming back to the program? <laughs> and I said, I'm going to see him soon, and he'll be back on very soon. Yeah, it's so wonderful to think, you know, that in Fiji, I'd love to go there. Well, we do go there with our program, for which I praise the Lord. But how uh, grateful I am that this program goes into every country of the world now, Carl. Yes. And in fact, last year, friends, we heard from every country and how grateful I am. We're able to take the truth, the Word of God, to every soul on earth. Thank you for sharing that. Well, Fiji, 150 years ago, was the cannibal capital of the world, literally. The worst case for uh, to be made for cannibalism was made in Fiji. A man would eat his best friend if he got hungry enough. But the gospel of Jesus Christ oh. and the personal reception of Jesus Christ into the hearts of those savages made all the difference in the world. And it can make all the difference in your life as well. More to come on that at the close of the program. Oh, yes. Amen, Carl. Well, you, right up front, I mentioned the no-go zones looming for America. You realize, friends, what that means, don't you? 
that there are some areas now where actually they're saying, we're going to take over this area, and we're putting our law in there. And Jack had a lot to say about that on one of our programs. I'd like to insert that right now as to what he had to say. Take a look. They got 55 no-go zones in Sweden. They have 100 in England, and they're afraid to go in those places because they might be killed. I'm talking about the police. England, 100, the no-go zones. And I just talked to my relatives in Belgium, said we're afraid to go downtown Brussels because of what's going on here. Afraid to go to Brussels. I can't believe it. It's all over Europe, too, friends, as well as here in the United States. Now, I showed you the locations of the militant groups in America. Let me show you their camps in America. And there they are, all the way from New York to California, Texas, Oklahoma, and Michigan and Colorado. Oh, Jack, they're training there, aren't they? Yes, and ISIS is already here in all 50 states to kill our military men. We better bring our boys home to defend the United States of America, the land we love. Now, is this all prophesied in Scripture in Luke 21, verse 9? He says, when you hear of wars and commotions, wars and revolutionaries, wars and terrorism, be not frightened. These things must first come before what? When they're happening, and they are. Then shall they see the Son of Man, Jesus, coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to happen, and they are, then look up. Your redemption draws nigh, and that's the redemption of the body. When he says, come up hither, and we go to meet him in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. And he ends with verses 31 and 32. This is our Jesus. He said, and what is happening, full blast, this terrorism. My kingdom is nigh at hand. I'm coming back to set up my kingdom forever. Coming back to set up my kingdom, whoa. Isn't that wonderful to know that we have a blessed hope just around the corner? But some things we have to face right now. I would like for you to see some of the up-to-date headlines. And this one, oh my, oh my, what a threat it is. European U.S. officials warn of severe uh, terror threat. And you know, that's uh, the British prime minister saying that to us. We've got to be careful. Ottawa closely monitoring as video repeats ISIS calls for Canada attacks, our neighbor to the north. Islam experts, no-go zones looming for America. Now, that's the one to which I just referred. Islamic Tribunal confirmed in Texas. Okay mm. there, Dr. Baugh. Attorney claims it's voluntary. An Ohio man arrested for alleged ISIS-inspired plot on U.S. Capitol, the FBI says. You know what? I want you to take a look. This is August. Al-Qaeda branch calls for new attacks against the United States. Some of those were leading up to this one. This is something that they are planning. U.S. consulate in Turkey targeted wave of attacks kills nine. Now, which consulate is that? The U.S. in Turkey. We're not safe anywhere, actually. 800 potential ISIL terrorists back in Europe prepared to do anything. And then Britain digs in against ISIS and Russia and Canada to purchase Iron Dome-like radar systems. They say, we've got to do something. So they are purchasing this, and it's the one after which Israel's Iron, Iron Dome was uh, taken. Now, you know, friends, I want to go to our guest today. Certainly we need to be vigilant. Sometimes when we read headlines or we turn on the TV, we want to turn it off. We need to be vigilant because when we hide from something, it doesn't change. We need to be awake and willing to do things that will help us during this time uh, that we are going through. But it does point to something. It points to what Jack was saying. I'm coming back again. Yes. Dr. Rexella, this program over the years has brought hope to a world besieged by terror. Now that terror is becoming a way of life for the British Prime Minister to announce that, America, you're next. We're in trouble, and you'll be in trouble soon. For our tax dollars building roads and highways and streets down peaceful, placid towns, now to be taken over by Sharia law, for in my home state of Texas, 
for a tribunal to be set up where they can declare their own laws against what we have constitutionally held and abided by. And if we broke those laws, we would be incarcerated. Yet we have a system entrenching the mind and permission throughout the United States to literally enslave our country and our way of life with a foreign disposition, uh, asking for special privileges, and yet we're threatened with the very freedoms of speech and religion that we've held dear all our lives and since the Founding Fathers placed them in the Constitution. This is a difficult hour, but Dr. Van Ippe, as always, gives the bottom line that really counts. Jesus Christ said, in spite of the terror, and it's going to get worse, in spite of the persecution that Christians are going to face, in spite of that, I'm coming again, and the hope is in me, Jesus Christ said. The King of kings and Lord of lords is on his way back soon, but until then, we want to declare the truth around the world like you're doing on this program. Amen. Thank you so much, Carl, for that. And we just can't thank the Lord enough that we're able to reach every single country in the world. Now, I was dealing a lot there with the United States, and so was Carl, dealing a lot with what's happening here, the no-go zones and so forth. I couldn't believe what I just learned. Just as I was coming into the studio here, uh, something was revealed to me, and I'm going to share it with you. I trust it will help you to open your eyes also. Now, take a good look at that. These are billboards that an organization titled Islamic Circle of North America is hoping to erect 100 across the United States during 2015. That first one, find Jesus in the Quran. We're going to talk about that at, at length in just a moment. Next, take a look at this next one, if you will, please. And this is in Orlando. Same family, same message, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Mohammed. All right, let's go on. One family, one message, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Mohammed. Now this is in Dallas, in English. Well, they also did it in Spanish, of course. Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Mohammed. So that the people down there, no matter where they're from, could certainly read it. Now this truly disturbs me, friends, because they're putting up these billboards and people are going to say, oh, I'm reading something that is a fact. It wouldn't be on a billboard otherwise. The Jesus in the Quran is not the Jesus in the Bible. I noticed there, Quran 3, 45. Well, if you turn to the Bible and you turn to John 3, 16, it gives the truth. And I am going to have our guest, Dr. Carabaugh, really come in on this. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. They do not believe that in the Quran. They do not believe he was savior of the world. They do not believe he was crucified. They do not believe he rose again. They do not believe that he is the one that came from heaven to save us. Carl, explain it all. You have stated that perfectly. As this program is Dr. Van Impey for a number of years, has announced worldwide. The Jesus of the Quran is not the Jesus of the Bible. But the tragedy of these billboards is that the average Christian who is placid in his disposition, peaceful in his conduct of life, wants to keep peace and he says, well, really Jesus is there, so it can be one religion. That's called Chrislam, and that is the move of this day. But as Rexella asked, this audience needs to know what is the difference. The Jesus of the Quran and of the theologians of the Quran of Islam did not go to Calvary, did not die for anybody's sins, literally had a surrogate, Judas by name, take his place on the cross. This is what Islam teaches. And he did not die for our sins, did not arise from the dead, but he will return one day because he's believed on by millions of people, billions worldwide. So according to Islam, Jesus will return as he promised he would during his lifetime. And when he does, he will say, well, really, I'm an imposter. Muhammad is the real answer to life. And therefore, I want you to believe on him. And literally, the theologians of Islam teach that if Christians do not abdicate their faith and turn to the Islamic religion, that Jesus will be the executioner to carry it out. 
That's what Islam teaches. But the Bible teaches very clearly. Jesus Christ said, I and the Father are one. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, not a surrogate, not an imposter, He gave His only begotten Son, Calvary, the resurrection, the hope of life, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ in the Bible is not only God in the flesh, but He conquered our fears and gave us peace. He conquered death came forth in the resurrection. And He promised in our midnight of terror, which we're going to have to face, in our midnight of terror, He will return to rescue Israel, to rescue the Christians, to literally redeem the world from destruction. He is our hope and our only hope. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. Mm. You know, Carl, it's so wonderful that we've been able to fill in with different guests while Jack's been gone. Yes. Thank you for your input always. We also had on our program a converted Muslim terrorist. Do you remember him a few weeks ago? And he made it very clear that the thing that brought him to Jesus Christ was in reading the Bible he realized he did not have to work his way to heaven, as they try to do yes. in the Quran. Work his way to heaven, nor did he have to shed blood to get to heaven, paradise. And he realized that God gave his son, Jesus Christ, who died and gave his blood that we could be saved. Yes. What a testimony, Carl, that is. And it is so very, very true. The God of the universe gave his son, Jesus Christ to die on Calvary and we don't have to work our way just trust in him thank you so much for that Carl and how true it is isn't it all other religions all not only Islam but all other religions have a form of self works to merit heaven but only in the Bible only the clear message of grace in the Word of God states that Jesus shed His blood and His blood covers from all sin. Why blood? Well, the blood even in our veins is that which removes the contamination and brings the ingredients of new life. So it is the blood of Jesus Christ that removes our sinful contamination and gives us a new life in Himself. Christianity, the person of Jesus, Jesus stands alone among all the religions of the world. Amen. Only one Savior, and yes. it's our Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to be talking more about that in just a moment. But we're going to be having a different uh, offer for you this week, and it is Beware False Prophets. Whoa, if ever we needed that, we need it today. Take a look, please, at the promo. Beware, false prophets, damnable heresies, and doctrines of demons are the final signs and dangers facing Christianity in the 21st century. The Bible warns that ministers will arise who will betray the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible calls them apostates, antichrists, and super deceivers, like Judas who for the almighty dollar delivered Christ to the enemies of the gospel. That hour has arrived. Bible translators remove 91 verses claiming Christ is the Son of God from the Holy Bible for decadent versions created for Muslims. Does it matter? Shockingly so. Why? Christianity's foundation and major theological points have been destroyed by what the Bible calls doctrines of demons. This same group of blasphemers have obliterated the major Bible doctrines for salvation, including the deity of Christ, his virgin birth, his sacrificial blood atonement, his bodily resurrection, and his second coming. Who are these Judas Iscariots? Have they committed the unpardonable sin against Christ and the Holy Spirit? Order Dr. Van Empey's shocking video, Beware False Prophets, Damnable Heresies and Doctrines of Demons, and find out. You know, friends, if ever there were an hour that we needed to be aware of what's going on in the pulpits and elsewhere, it's right now. And I love the title of this video, Beware 
false prophets. They're saying things that really are not in the Bible, and they're actually it's Bible doctrines they're destroying, and the Bible calls them doctrines of demons. So beware of what you accept. Now, please don't put this off. There's a 800 number, and there's the address. Order it right away. You need to be aware and aware of what's going on in the world. So please make that call. We're going to go on here very, very quickly. Our time is really slipping away, but take a look. You know, the Iran deal is still on the minds of everybody. Supreme leader opposes nuke deal, says Iranian hardliner. Whoa! You mean the Supreme Leader doesn't want it over there? Khamenei, Iran will block U.S. influence. Well, we give them money, but we don't want to hear from you. And then Iran sending nuke deal money to terror groups on border. Netanyahu says, well, there you have it. They're giving money to those terror groups. Iranian-Russian warships hold joint war games. You know, that really is something we need to be aware of. If you ask me, Iran says Russia to deliver S-300 missiles by next week. They're working together, Iran and Russia. Senior commander, Iran to continue production, imports of weapons, irrespective of foreign views. And Iran, no nuclear inspectors will be allowed. Whoa, without approval. Okay, we'll get ready for you. And there you have it. International Atomic Energy Agency says Iran has expanded Parchin nuclear facility. It doesn't look like they're pulling back very much to me, friends. We need to be aware of what's going on, not only in the line of religion, but what's going on around the world, Carl. Our eyes are closed, even to Iran. Our eyes are really closed, and it appears that some duplicity is going on. The Iranian powers want the United States to surrender more and more, and yet we've already surrendered too much without proper oversight. And as some of the uh, headlines have already stated, as Rex Seller read just a moment ago, uh, they don't want the inspectors that would be approved by the international community, they want to approve the inspectors themselves. So what's really going on? We're leading up to a point where Iran, which is ancient Persia, where Iran is having a major statement and will become a major player with nuclear capabilities. And it appears that our Congress, our administration, our leaders are pell-mell surrendering our own sovereignty and our well-being while we're paying the price here for the oil. We're paying the price for the oil of the Middle East, funding that in order for terrorism to entrench itself in the United States. Mm -hmm. Were it not for the prophecies, that Dr. Van Ippy and Rexella have been declaring on this program worldwide for decades, were it not for those prophecies, I would live with a, a bit of terror. But I live in absolute peace because of the promise of Jesus Christ. And he wrote this out in the scripture. Now we're living this experience. You know, Carl, that's so true. We really are living this experience, and I want you to see a headline that really touched my heart. People who are living this experience, evangelicals feel threatened by anti-terror policies. Now, Christians take very seriously the command to go and make disciples in all nations, and right now they are feeling threatened to even open their mouth in some areas lest they be put to death. But uh, how good it is to know that we do have a peace that nobody else can have because we have a Lord. Absolutely. Jesus said, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you, persecute you, and say all manner of evil against you falsely. And he, then he said, Great is your reward in heaven. And he said, So persecuted they the prophets. Uh, I think we as a Christian community in the United States have been remiss in that we have not been persecuted. We actually established these liberal laws. They're conservative in the sense that everyone has a marvelous privilege in the courts, but they're liberal in the sense that they give everyone an equal footing under the law. And yet, evangelicals now feel threatened because these very laws to stop terrorism can be interpreted used against Christians to stop their voice. Yet Jesus said a wonderful thing. Rexella, you mentioned peace. Jesus, in incidentally making statements, makes an eternally profound dimension become reality. 
He said, my peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. You know, we've taken that little statement for granted, my peace I leave with you. But after he left, the Holy Spirit came and we literally have the peace of God. Worldwide right now, individuals suffering persecution will be encouraged to know that the peace of Jesus, once you've received him, resides within our very hearts and minds. Mm, amen, Carl. You know, there's only one way to heaven. It is not the Jesus in any other religion. It's the Jesus in the Bible. Have you ever opened your heart to the Son of God? Have you ever allowed Jesus Christ, Savior of the world, to come into your heart? Now, you know, we're facing some things we don't mention every week. We're facing some things that are in your family. Your son may be on drugs. Your daughter may be in illicit sex uh, relationship. So many things in this world that really don't have to do with politics. It has to do with something very personal. It's in the Bible, though. We can be forgiven if only we'll open our hearts to the Lord and ask Him to come in. Will you do that? Have you ever become a child of God, asked Jesus to be your Savior? No matter what it is, the blood of Jesus, God's Son, will cleanse from all sin. I'm going to ask our, our wonderful guest today, Dr. Carl Ball, to lead us in that prayer of acceptance of Jesus as your Savior. Carl. Trusting Jesus is a unique, one-time, very personal experience. Trusting Jesus is trusting a unique person, the only one who died for our sins. Prayer doesn't save us, but it's the best way to put our trust in Him. Would you pray this simple prayer with me? Dear God, I'm a lost sinner. I need you. I need you to cover my sins with your blood right now. I open my heart to you. Step into my heart and live. I will serve you with all my heart. Amen. I trust that you prayed that prayer. If you did, please write to me. There's my address. I'll send you this little booklet for steps in a new direction. How good it is to be a child of God, to be forgiven of every sin, and to walk with Him. Write to me. I'll send it to you. Now, here's our announcement to tell you how you can receive our wonderful offer, one you've got to have. Beware, false prophets. Chuck? Thank you, Rex Heller, my friend, to order. Beware, false prophets, damnable heresies, and doctrines of demons. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 704, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Back to Rex Allen. Friends, there's the 800 number and there's the address. We need to be aware of what's going on. Beware of false prophets. I'll get this in the mail as soon as I hear from you. I love this saying and I want to leave it with you. The best way to be anxious about nothing is to be prayerful about everything. Look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.